All right, so we're going to look at a quick problem about egg incubation, and this is just going to be using the uh, normal distribution. So our problem is that the mean incubation time for a type of fertilized egg kept at 100.7 degrees Fahrenheit is 20 days. Suppose that the incubation times are approximately normally distributed with a standard deviation of two days. What is the probability that a randomly selected fertilized egg hatches in less than 16 days? Okay, so our general idea is that we have something that's approximately normally distributed. So hopefully we're thinking about a nice little normal curve. And we have a mean, which remember that's going to be right in the middle. So a mean of 20 days. And so for this first problem, we're wanting to find the probability that a randomly selected fertilized egg hatches in less than 16 days. Um, so 16 days is going to be over here. And we're looking for the area to the left of that. So we're looking for less than 16 days. All right. And since we've got that our mean is 20, so our mean is 20 days, and it says that our standard deviation is 2 days. So actually, the 16 is going to be 2 standard deviations to the left. Uh, but if you didn't remember that, we can go through and find our z-score. So our z-score is going to be our data point minus our mean over our standard deviation. So x minus mu over sigma. So for a, that's going to look like 16 minus 20 over 2. So this will be 4 over 2, excuse me, negative 4 over 2. Or negative 2. And then we can go and look that up in the table. So you uh, have a table in your appendix. This is not the one from your appendix, but this one will work. So I need to find the z-score whenever I have a z-score of negative 2. And our, the top of the table is even showing you that whenever you get the z-score, the area is the area to the left of what you're looking up, because that's what's shaded up here. So if you look, negative 2, which is right there. Let's see if I can highlight that for us. So negative 2. And it's negative 2.0. We're going to have 0 0.0228. So that's going to be the area to the left of our z-score of negative 2. OK, so our area is 0 0.0228. So that would be for A. Now let's look at B. So B is actually quite similar. So for B, we want to find the probability that a randomly selected fertilized egg takes over 24 days to hatch. So again, we have this similar picture. So our approximately normal curve, or our normal curve, we have 20 in the middle, and we're looking for what is above 24. Now, you might be thinking, hmm, this looks kind of similar to this on the opposite side. And if you're thinking that, you'd be correct. So 20 to 24, that's actually two standard deviations away. But if you didn't catch that, then you can do the, oops, excuse me, 24, not 20. We need to do 24, our data point, minus our mean over our standard deviation. So it's going to give us a positive 4 over 2, or a positive 2. Now, what's going to happen whenever we look this up is we're going to get a very large number. So let's look that up right quick in our table. And we're looking at positive 2. OK, and for positive 2, we're going to have 0.9772. Now, I want you to keep in mind that the 0.9772 is the area to the left. So it's saying that all the area to the left is 0.9772. We need the area to the right. So we're going to do 1 minus 0.9772. And then this super fantastic thing happens. And we're going to get that 0.0228. Yeah, 
hand. If that sounds familiar, it should. Because it's the same as what we got for answer A. The reason it's the same is because our normal curve, our normal distribution, it's symmetric. So the area to the left, two standard deviations away from the mean, is the same as the area to the right, uh, two standard deviations above the mean. So this little area in blue to the left of 16 is the same as the area to the right of 24, because that's two standard deviations to the left. Uh, for the negative six, or sorry, excuse me, for the 16 and two standard deviations to the right for the 24. All right, now let's look at C. So for part C, it's asking us the probability they randomly selected fertilized egg hatches between 18 and 20 days is. Okay, so we have our normal distribution again. And we know 20 is our mean, so that's in the middle. 18 is going to be below it. And we are looking for the area in between here. Well, if you want to use your table, then we can look that up uh, after we get our z-scores. So we have two z-scores. Hopefully, you know the z-score for the 20, but we'll work it out anyway. But to get the z-score for the 18, we're going to do 18 minus 20 over 2. So that's going to be a negative 2 over 2 or a negative 1. And then for the 20, we have 20 minus 20, because again, our data point minus our mean over our standard deviation. So we're going to have 0 over 2 or just 0. Uh, and again, hopefully that one's already clicking for you. But if not, maybe it will uh, next time. So we need to find the area between a z-score of negative 1 and 0. So whenever we look that up, we go to a negative 1. And with negative 1, we're going to get this point 1587. So what that is, is this area over here. That area, okay, not beautifully shaded, but you get the idea. So that is 0 point, I believe that was 1587, we'll double check. Yes, 1587. All right, and then we need to find the z-score, or excuse me, we have the z-score, we need to find the area to the left of a z-score of 0. And again, this is one I was hoping you already knew, uh, because 0 is going to be the one smack in the middle. The area to the left or to the right is going to be 0.5. So let's come back over here. And so all of this area here, all of that is going to be 0.5. So all that area will be 0 0.5. So to find the difference, we're just going to subtract. So we have that 0 0.5 minus... 0 0.1587, so 0 0.3413. And then it's asking us, would it be unusual for an egg to hatch in less than 15 days and why? So for part D, and we give us just a little more space. There we go. All right, so for part D, we're, we're wondering about less than 15 days. So we have 20 right here, so 15 is going to be to the left of that. And we need to find the area to the left of that 15. So we'll find our z-score first. So we're going to do our data points, so that 15 minus our mean, so 20 over our standard deviation of 2. So we're going to have negative 5 over 2 or negative 2.5. So we're going to look that up in our chart right quick. So we're looking for negative 2.5. And that's going to be right here. So negative 2.50, 0 0.0062. That's the area to the left 
of a negative 2.5 z squared. So area equals 0 0.00, uh, was it 6? Six, 6, 2. And it's asking, is this unusual? Well, it is unusual because it's less than 0 0.05. So for this class, uh, and most of the statistics courses that you take, if it has less than a 5% chance or less than a 0 0.05 probability of happening, then we're going to consider it unusual. Now, you might be wondering why I have the calculator showing, and I just did everything by hand. I'm going to show you how to also do these problems with a calculator. So for our first one, again, I'm going to come back and reference our picture here. Um, we want to know the area to the left of 16. So we have to be a little bit sneaky about it. And actually, I think I'm going to start with part C first, which might sound a little strange. But for part C, saying that the probability that a randomly selected fertilized egg hatches between 18 and 20 days is. All right, so after I've got this on, I need to go to my distribution. So I'm going to go to second bars. And then I'm going to go to my normal CDF. This is my cumulative uh, distribution function for the normal curve. And so you're going to get this normal CDF. Now let me make a note over here for everybody, including myself. So we're going to have this normal CDF. And then you're going to have your lower bound your upper bound, your mean, and then your standard deviation. So we're going to list four things and then close our parentheses. So for C, it's quite easy because it's telling us that we want to find between 18 and 20 days. So our lower bound is 18. Our upper bound is 20. Our mean is 20, and our standard deviation is 2. And we'll close those parentheses, and we're going to get that 0 0.3413 uh, that we got the first time. Uh, OK, so now let's talk about A and B. The reason these are a little bit trickier with a calculator is because we need a lower bound and an upper bound. Well, for 16, this is saying everything so that we want everything less than 16. So to, since this technically goes on forever, we're just going to pick a really big negative number. So again, I'm going to go to second vars to get to my distribution, my normal CDF, so number two. I'm going to pick a big negative number. Remember, your negative is the one in the parentheses. So I'll pick negative uh, whatever that is. So negative several nines. And then I want to go up to 16. And then I have a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 2. And sure enough, we get 0 0.022. Now, if we round that, that'll be an 8, just like we got the first time. And now, to use your calculator and do greater than 24 days. So again, this is the image that we have right here in green. So we want everything above 24. So 24 is the lowest number. And we want it to go really high. So this one's giving us a lower bound, but no upper bound. So again, I'm going to go to second. Uh, VARs to get to our distribution. Go down to normal CDF. For our lower bound, it's going to be 24. And then our upper bound, we're just going to pick a big positive number. So there. Um, what is that? 99,999? Seems big enough. Uh, and then our mean, we're going to use 20 still. And our standard deviation, we're going to use 2 still. And there we have our 0 0.0228. All right, last one. So would it be unusual for an egg to hatch in less than 15 days? So again, area to the left. We're going to put in a big negative number, and then 15 for our upper bound. So second vars, we're going to go to number 2. I'm going to put in a big negative number. And then I'll go up to 15. We have a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 2. And we're getting that 0 0.0062, just like we got from the table. So either way works. Uh, obviously, the calculator will be a little bit faster, but you will have tables available uh, for your final. 
so whatever makes you happy, you can do.